I've been mulling over the idea of um, of broadcasting a video about this because obviously it's a very it's very personal and it's, it's the kind of it's the kind of thing that's very difficult to, to tell people, um, particularly people you're close to, and not many people in my life know about um, what I'm about to explain. Um, please keep watching because I have got a message behind all of this. <sighs> I have a mental condition. I prefer to say condition to illness because I don't really, I don't really like to see it that way. I, I think condition sounds a bit makes me feel a little bit more able. I've been mentally unwell, let's say, since I was 12 years old. And I'm almost 22 now, so it's been, uh, it's been around about a decade. Uh, when I was 12, I went through trauma and I suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. After watching a really, a really uh, graphic horror movie, I didn't have much to say at the time, and I, I still remember that night, like it happened yesterday, I remember it so vividly. Um, but that happened when I was 12, and um, I still struggle with that even now. But for a long time I suffered from flashbacks and, and bad nights, and that would often even uh, torment me, I suppose, in the day as well as the night. Um, over the years it got better. After several years it became solely a problem when I was trying to get to sleep. So I was in the dark but I was still awake. And oh, that was very all consuming. The, the fear was indescribable. I would experience panic attacks and sometimes Anyone who's experienced panic attacks, I don't know if you have, but mine made me feel like I was genuinely going crazy, like my fear was my fear was absolutely going to get me and I, I was just... I don't really want to say delusional, but I, I, I wasn't seeing reality during the panic attacks because it, it just takes over. Uh, but that's has improved. I'm I'm pretty sure that that's on its way out. It's good. Um, unfortunately, I've had things to deal with on top of that. I know you can get people who are just natural, naturally born warriors, and they just overthink everything. I just thought I was always like that, but my anxiety was a bit more, well it was above average, it was a lot more extreme really. I would worry about the most ridiculous things that I, other people would, they might worry about it initially but they'd eventually see the reality and know that it's not in their control necessarily. But anything that's not in my control, I, um, my mind fixes on. But that's bearable. Um, I can live with that, I'm used to it. Being chronically anxious is just... Well, I kind of identify myself with it because it's... It's, it's just me being extremely panicky about everything. <laughs> and um, so... Ooh. So that's just how it is. I've also been struggling with a third condition. Oh. This is the hard one, I don't like to tell people. I... Uh, uh, where do I start? There's no gentle way to put it really. Um, last, at the beginning of last summer, I... Um, I wasn't myself. I was really out of sorts when I got home uh, after my foundation degree. And I was feeling... 
uh, consistently low, nothing was nothing was helping or anything, and I suppose from that you can you can guess what the problem was. I became depressed, and I still am depressed. It's been it's been several months, so I do find that hard to say to people. I find hard it hard to say it out loud. Not many people know about it, and if any of my friends watch this, surprise! Um, I have told a few friends about being a very anxious person and the PTSD because they've been very long term problems and they're they're easier. I don't know that they're, they're in another category. Telling someone you're depressed is like something else entirely. I can't really describe it. I've had... Well, my relationships with my family have really... Well, they've, they have suffered from, from this. Um, once I felt... Once I became depressed, things got a whole lot worse. And it was it was on me, but uh, I wasn't doing it deliberately. I... So after figuring out that I was depressed, uh, when I came um, here to do my third year, I went straight to the counsellor and made an appointment really early on in the year um, to explain the situation. And she instantly said, "Look, I think you should go and see your GP." because she did an anxiety and depression scale type test thing thingy with me and both were um, really high, particularly the depression score. So she said instantly, go and see your GP about it. And um, I've, I've been on medication since around October and um, I've changed my medication because I didn't seem to be really improving on the other ones, although it gave me a little bit of a lift at the very beginning, but it really didn't make the difference that it should have done. I'd already gone through a year of counselling um, the year before, in my second academic year, and I went, I went to counselling the, the entire year round, it, she made a special exception for me, and that was before when I I was only trying to come to terms with my PTSD because it had reached its peak and it was stopping me function properly for my degree and I couldn't really study properly. But thankfully she really helped me out. I went through CBT, Cognitive Behaviour Therapy, which was okay but it didn't seem to really change anything. I didn't didn't seem to notice any difference, but then what really helped me was exposure therapy. Now, um, exposure therapy is, well, simply put, it's like it's just like it's like a phobia facing your fear when you have a phobia. Um, you have your fear right in front of you, and in my case, I had an image of something that from the film I can't even describe it to you. But we had we had a fun drawing session. We used to draw on it with fun crayons and stuff, and we used to make fun faces and things. And she did it with me, so it felt like a fun, like I was a little child again in year four. But all of the things you need to worry about was what colour to draw with, and it helped. Um, after doing that, I had to have the po the the picture. Um, up in my room, I had to tape it up on the wall so it was clearly visible up pretty much all the time. I had to look at it whenever I could and it was the initial start that of course was the, the hardest part. Um, God, I remember, I remember feeling my heart beating a lot faster when I first saw the image but when, when I drew all over it it just looked ridiculous and it really really helped. I even started laughing. After a while having that put up in my room, I started to talk to it but as if it was like a friend. 
so I tried to kind of replace it with a good feeling um, and that worked tremendously for me and um, that's really when my flashbacks and nightmares and, and panic attacks really plummeted it was it was amazing and I can't thank I can't thank my counsellor enough for that I, I wish I still had her now really <laughs> there you go the reason I wanted to do this video was not just to um, admit my own condition but I also wanted to say in a video how frustrating it is for this massive stigma that there is in amongst people about mental illness. People don't... How do I say this? When people look at someone who has like... who has something physical, physically wrong, a physical condition, temporary or, or long term or something they were born with, they'll they'll sympathise with them and and if they're friends with them they they'll talk about it, they're open about it because it's right in front of them. You you can't you can't really get around it. It's it's out there in the open. But just because you can't see someone's mental condition, if they're not I don't know why people do it. Maybe it's because they can't see the problem, so they're almost in, not in denial, but they don't fully believe that it's a problem, that, that it even exists. I think it's to do with a lot of people being uh, mistrusting and people sit themselves now, community isn't what it used to be because everyone's so closed off and they're stuck and they're stuck uh, in front of their laptops all the time and tablets and everything people don't talk anymore and it's difficult I suppose the best example is like my family because um, for a long time since I became depressed I couldn't mention it in the house, and I still can't. Uh, I made the mistake of trying to talk to some of my family members about how I felt, and um, to put it, putting it simply, it it didn't go the way I wanted it to. But I'm I'm trying to work on it. I, I understand that it's difficult to be there for someone who has a mental problem when you haven't had it yourself. You, you don't know what to say for comfort. Um, I've been that person too. But if it's if it's just simply acknowledged, and you say, "Look, I I hope you can get through it," and and things you'd say things you'd say to, to anyone who wasn't well. It's not like I want people, you know, shouting shouting on the hills that I'm not completely with it but it feels like I have to pretend it's not there I've already had problems with um, isolating myself from other people but I'm working on it I really am trying uh, I think. I suppose my fear put simply is that once people know I'm depressed that they'll look at me differently. That's probably what I'm most scared of. Um, I don't want people to think I'm pretending to enjoy their company and think it's all an act because it isn't. And I don't want anyone to feel bad. And I do want to mention as well that I I know that I am more fortunate than many people in the world. I know that I have a good life. I know that I have everything I need. I 
I have my family, I have my education, I have my lovely boyfriend and his family, and I've got my best friends and um so I'm not trying to make a video just to say, oh feel sorry for me, I'm I'm this victim of that's really not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that I'm not well, but it's okay because we might save more lives if we just talk to each other and people ask each other if they're okay. Who knows what's going through someone else's mind? <sighs> ah. I feel good after getting ill, my mind. If you want to know more about um, how, how I go about my day-to-day -day life, um, in this aspect, uh, I do have a blog, and the link is on my channel. It's called Jess Marie Unlocked. So if you want to check that out, I'd be really, really, really super grateful. And um, if you ever drop by and give me a comment, because it's nice. It's nice to think that people are actually reading it. <laughs> I really. I hope this wasn't too depressing. It probably was really, really dark and horrible to listen to, but this video was important to me and for a long time I was scared to do it, but I'm glad that I have now. But yeah, if you have any questions or anything, if you want to talk to me, then drop me a message. Uh, I do like that. And I will talk to you soon.